Dirty old part of the city where the sun refused to shine. Why can't we have a sequel to Tango and Cash? I don't think there's a good reason why we can't. I mean, besides possibly the stars' egos being too big or not wanting to work with each other anymore. Isn't Kurt Russell just like cool, cool dad now? Isn't he just like chilling out? I've never heard that he's like a raging asshole or anything like that. Okay, well, maybe I'm just hearing it in my head as them being raging assholes. Maybe they're really not. Maybe they're really chill, like you said. Stallone is, you know, he's he's a pro. Uh, he'll he'll take over the movie if he's got a, a production or if he's a producer on it. Uh, I think it could happen. Um, we don't have Jack Palance, sadly. Let's recast the villain as uh, the son of Jack Palance's crime lord. Uh, Adam Driver is going to play him because I want to put Adam Driver in everything for some reason. That's my plan. <laughs> I think it's a great plan. Um, I think Adam Driver is a great bad guy. Um, I mean, I enjoy him as Kylo Ren. So We pick up with them as uh, older men. You know, it's all contemporary, and it's called Tango and More Cash. I like it. Cash has a son played by who? Oh boy, you're going to have to remind me who's Tango and who's Cash, because embarrassingly, I do not remember. Tango, Cash. <laughs> okay, so Cash is Stallone. No, ca- <laughs> Cash is, no, that that's Cash. That's him, <laughs> oh, that's him calling. Oh, it's insane, Cash. Yeah, right. Okay. So he's Tango. Okay, so who, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> who plays Sylvester Stallone's kid? Or, uh, well, no, there's more cash. Uh, I mean, Kurt Russell's kid. <gasps> Kurt Russell's kid. We cracked it. Yes. Him. What is his name again? Uh, Wyatt. Yes. Wyatt. Wyatt's great. I think he's a great actor. And he looks a lot like his dad and he acts a lot like his dad. So he'd be perfect to play his kid. Now, ironically, he is more like uh, Tango was. He is buttoned down. We're not, not going to go three-piece suit on this, but he is, you know, he, he wants to do it by the book. He's the good cop, whereas his dad has a gun in his boot contraption, <laughs> lives in a crappy apartment. You know, he doesn't care. Yeah, um, I I like where this is headed. Um, I think... Where is it headed? Um, to sequel success. To the bank. Exactly. That's where it's going. We're headed home. After day three of Convergence, this is the Just Enough Trope podcast. I'm your host, Caliban, and joined as always by my co-host. Hi, I'm Mikan Hana. And we are here to recap the third day of our Convergence 2019. Um, boy, I said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, this room is my prison. This room is my prison. I feel like the uh, Count of Monte Cristo, and I finally busted out of room Great Lakes B. Yeah, I know. You were literally in there for just about at least half of the day, if not all of the day. Every panel's an hour. Yes. And then there's a half an hour passing time. Yes. And you were in there for three panels in a row. So I was there for four and a half hours. Yes, you were. So I can understand why you were a little sick of it by the end. Yeah. Uh, after kind of a late night last night, uh, we got back home, flew back to the con in the, I say morning, more like afternoon, and set up to start doing some programming, man. And we did. We did it. My first panel was what? You talked about the second season of Discovery. That's right. That was a great panel. Uh, really had a lot of fun. Such a, you know, it's a good show, so there's a lot to talk about. Um it, you can't help but make a show or a panel like that uh, about the other properties that are being developed uh, in that universe. Um, so just a panel of knowledgeable people with a lot of enthusiasm talking about uh, the second season of Disco. Yeah, I think it was really a really great discussion. Um, you had um, it was a full panel and, uh, you know, a lot of enthusiasm for Discovery. Like you said, uh, you're co-host for Discoverage, Ella Pearson, was on the panel as well. Also the co-host of the Generations Geek podcast. Yes, thank you for plugging that as well. Um, and yeah, I think it. you guys had a pretty good discussion going on, and you were the mod for that as well. 
Yeah, I was. I felt bad because I uh, shut one guy down. I thought he was trolling me. And then I saw him in later panels and realized, oh, I think it's just his way. But it was the guy who was like sitting back. He was kind of slouched. He had his arms, you know, on either chair. Like, all right, teach, impress me. You know, I came to class today. And he asked like <laughs> at the end, at 55 minutes into the Star Trek Discovery panel, he's like, so where do you get this discovery? Like, is it on the Internet or it's like CBS? Do you stream it? And, of course, if you're a fan of Star Trek Discovery, um, you know that it's been a point of contention that people are like, I don't want to pay for Star Trek. You pay for all kinds of things. You paid before by watching commercials. Now you don't have any. It's an argument. But I thought that that's what he was doing. And I didn't, like, yell at him, but I basically just shut it down real fast and moved on. But I did give him his answer. And the answer is, it's seven bucks gets you it anywhere. On your TV, on your phone, on your dog's butthole, it'll play anywhere so go check it out yeah it is uh cbs all access we're not we're doing ads for everybody (laughs) cut that one off send us the check uh what do we talk about after that or what did i talk about uh well both of us were on the captain marvel panel yeah uh so it was um well uh and i think ella was the mod for that one and um we had uh you know it was a full panel again full room uh, and I, I think we had a good discussion about Captain Marvel. Yeah, a lot of people showed up, a lot of enthusiasm. That's a really big room. I think that's probably the biggest room that uh, we did this uh, this year. And, um, you know, we've talked about Captain Marvel on our show. You can probably uh, look back in our archives to find our review of it. Um, you know, what I love about the movie, more than the movie, is people's enthusiasm about the character mm-hmm. and about the movie. I think that's the biggest strength is that they created something that um, a lot of people got really excited about and you've, they, you got them hooked. And I'm sure, much like uh, Captain America, whose first movie I thought was all right, I didn't, it didn't blow me away, uh, they came back with one of the best movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. I'm hoping for a similar renaissance with like something Captain Marvel 2 um, but for Captain Marvel 1 it, it was okay and I felt like that it was mostly positive a lot of enthusiasm you don't come to a panel to really crap on a movie where they're at a squee but I felt like some people were willing to point out some of the shortcomings that the film has yeah um and and I do agree with you Cal I think that uh, I would like to see a Captain Marvel 2 that excels and really Shows what the character soars, yes, and really shows what the character is capable of. I'd like to see more of her um, space exploits and just seeing her interact with different species and um, be a hero throughout the universe. Because I don't think we that's been suggested, but we haven't really seen a lot of that. All that crunchy Marvel cosmic stuff. I'm going to kind of spoil where we're going because I want to bring up a great example of something that I didn't bring up in the sequel panel, which I should have, which is Adam's Family Values. Oh, yes. That is a superior movie to Adam's Family. And it's because it's the it's a similar thing to Captain Marvel. Fester is Captain Marvel in this case. <laughs> He's got hair. He doesn't remember who he is. And it takes the entire movie for him to become Fester and stick the light bulb in his mouth. And you're like... What is this? Fester Begins? I wanted Fester the entire time. So when they come back to make Adam's Family Values, why would you make this movie at all? (laughs) You know, it's like, how how many movies can you squeeze out of this quirky TV show that's based on a a newspaper comic strip? And (laughs) it is so tight. It is so hilarious. And they just bam, 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 knock it out. And adding Joan Cusack to something is always a good idea. Um, I would agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. And um, I... I actually remember enjoying both of the Adams Family films, um, but yeah, I like you said. Why do you want to see Fester begins? Let's just see him being Fester, and that's kind of how I feel about Captain Marvel a little bit too. And I know with um, you know any superhero film where it's a, just starting out, you kind of have to have an origin story. Um, no. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I would have liked to have seen less of an origin story from her, and I did share some of my concerns about the Captain Marvel film, and they were not always well received during the panel, I don't think, Uh, but that's okay, you know, everybody has their own opinion, and 
I, I think that's one of the things that makes Convergence great. It absolutely is. After that, something. <laughs> I'm so lost. <laughs> Well, I, I did something. Yes. Tell me, to stop me before I kill again. Uh, you did the the Avengers Endgame panel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, which I was a little worried about because, what do you talk about unless it's just sixty minutes of us going and then this and then this part and then this, this was so cool and this like, <laughs> what is it that you want to say other than something that we touched on very briefly, but again maybe is not a topic that could go the whole way, which was, can you believe we're here? We did talk about that a little. Um, we talked about the fact that, and Ella was on that panel too. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned uh, during the panel that there are people in the audience who are uh, younger. There are people on the dais uh, on the panel who are younger. Right. And I think it's so amazing that they got to grow up just knowing that those movies were out there. You know, like being Iron Man came out perhaps before they were sentient, <laughs> you, know, you know, as a living being. Yes. And it's hard to explain to somebody who has lived the, the MCU for the last 11 years how <sighs> depressed we would get when a comic book movie would be announced, it would come out, and you're like, I hope it's just watchable. You know, and that's all I want from it is J.D. Salinger's kid in this one. That's what I need to know. And now it's just a question of like, they're all going to be great. Uh, they might not be your favorite character. Right. Or right. a movie could totally turn you around and go, I didn't know I liked Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, it's just a, it's a, what a time to be alive. Moon pie. <laughs> I, you know, I agree. And, you know, I, uh, when I, when I was growing up, I mean, the, the Batman films and I'm talking about, um, the Tim Burton films, you know, were out. And, uh, I remember really enjoying the one with Penguin and <laughs> Catwoman. And I think if I were to rewatch that film today, I don't know if it would stand up in the same way. It doesn't, but it's got its own charms. Uh, little walking penguins uh, <laughs> in it. And so, yeah, it was fun. Uh, Miriam Krauss did a great job uh, moderating the panel, even though I suggested it. <laughs> I know. And I've done the major Marvel release for the last two years, but she did a really great job. Uh, what a successor. Uh, and after that, <laughs> you did a panel on your own. Yes, um, I did the uh, Chilling Adventure Hour. I want to call it the Chilling Adventure Hour. It, it's I can't remember. The I want to listen to that podcast. Yeah, I know. It, it's uh, the it's the, the Sabrina the Netflix show um, series, and uh, well, and we talked about how they're not technically seasons; they're parts. Right. So uh, parts one and two are out right now, and three and four are coming, uh, and we just. It, it was just three panelists, but um, it was really uh, a love fest, a squee, if you will. Sure. Uh, and we really shared that with uh, the audience, and the audience was very involved from the very beginning. We had took questions throughout, um, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. We just shared our love of the show, and um, I think everybody agreed that it was, it's a, it's a really well cast show. And um, that we really enjoy uh, the characters that, that these actors are portraying. And, and we enjoy that it's a much darker show than the original Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Why can't the cat talk, though? <laughs> we, we did talk about that. And somebody said they don't want the cat to talk because they don't want it to be a dumb puppet. Which what some, if it was cool, though? I know. And some of us, like like... I really liked when Salem talked, even though he was a dumb puppet. He was—I mean, I won't call him a dumb puppet. But he was sassy, um, but he was definitely a puppet. But he'll talk. Part seven, part eight. They'll, she'll find out. You could talk this whole time, right? I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> and um, I, but yeah, a lot of people said they don't want him to talk. Well, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's the chilling adventures of Sabrina based on a comic book. How seriously yeah. do you want to take it? But right. uh, yes, and then moving on from there, um, I think just one more thing. We um, checked out the party rooms. Yeah, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, boy, I mean, we need to talk about this. I guess you know, of course, the party setup is very different than it was last year. Mm-hmm. Something that we've lost is the flow, the yes. circuit. Uh, as you might know it, um, but of course we've gained a lot of space. Mm-hmm. Some of those party rooms are huge, yes. and that's cool. But 
every single one of them is like, <laughs> you know how like blood leaves your heart, goes yes. to your organs and extremities, yeah. then comes back the other way and it just keeps going. Yeah. What if there was no veins? What if blood just went to your fingertips and your fingertips swelled up and exploded because there was no way for the blood to come back? The yeah. blood is people. Discuss. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's not really a great flow, like you said. Uh, and you, you kind of feel like you're tripping up on people. It's a little hot. Um, it's not a lot of breathability or AC, um, which makes them a little, you know, less bearable, I would say. Um, but a lot of the parties were really worth seeing. Um, the US Nokomis, USS Nokomis is back. Right. Uh, and uh, then there were... Oh, Ocha- what? I can't remember. Ochaya, right? Yeah, yeah. The the tea room, and uh, um, then uh, the earworm, of course, was back, uh, and they had a really cool flow chart on the wall of uh, all the Doctor Who's. Uh, which was pretty neat. But their whole theme was like conspiracies, and they really went above and beyond. Like I know it's really tough to do a party room, so I never feel all that chagrined or you know when somebody's just like well we've got a stuffed animal come on have some booze like i understand why (laughs) that happens but they really outdid themselves like it's just think of the time it took to cut out all the newspaper articles and then put the string and imagine like the charlie from it's always sunny meme but just an entire large you know hotel room suite Yes, uh, and then there was a really great part of the Doctor Who conspiracy thing. There was a little note that said, Lizzo is a lizard person, which I really enjoyed. She's a Lizzo person. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then we closed out the night uh, with the old late night panel, the 1130. Uh, this, well, you should take it. This is your thing. Uh, yes, so uh, we did a panel called The Sequel Strikes Back. Uh, it was uh, a panel that I submitted uh, to programming, uh, and nobody had been assigned as moderator, so I kind of took that over. And it, so this was my first time being a moderator for a panel, and I think it went okay. Um, I think we had a pretty good discussion. It was there. It, there were not a lot of people who attended. That's not totally true. Okay. There was. 15 at one point people there and that is not all that bad for a remember it's saturday night yes. the floor is rumbling yes. from the <laughs> rave kicking in people saw sequels movies i like sequels and movies right. one guy saw godzilla read the wrong description <laughs> but we still well but we still included him and talked to him yes. uh the fact that people showed up at all uh was a success and uh, you handled it uh, really well and kept the conversation going. Uh, and you were <laughs> supported by myself and two other guys who knew a lot about movies and were willing to talk about them. Yeah, um, and I think it went pretty well. I, uh, and you and I kind of talked about this. I, I felt like I was a little unprepared and almost in comparison. But, like, you know, but I, all I did was talk about the sequels that I really enjoy and... Um, the sequels that I think are at least as good as, if not better, than the original films. Yeah, and you created the panel and its description, so next time, uh, layer in more hooks for you to (laughs) grab and use when you're the moderator. (laughs) It's your own fault. I I guess you're right about that. It was a lot of fun. Okay, good. I I had a lot of fun, too. Um, So I think we had a successful day three. Yes, and that is pretty much it. (laughs) We're free, except we're not. We're free from programming. We're going to be coming back uh, for Sunday, and we're doing our fan table, uh, which will open officially at 12, but we'll be there before then, uh, talking to people, uh, hopefully giving out some prizes for our photo scavenger hunt that we've set up for Convergence. Uh, Got some great stuff there. Meet and greet. Going to be interviewing some people. Uh, You know, the usual thing. Yes. um, Really looking forward to it. Uh, We got a couple of people lined up who we're going to speak to. Uh, you want me to go through them real quick? Yeah. Okay, we're going to be speaking to um, a couple of fellow podcasters. They're, they're a, they do a podcast called Rosemary's Ladies, which is a horror film podcast from the view of viewpoints of two women, which uh, they felt was 
not really represented in horror film podcasting, and I think I have to agree with them. Uh, we also are going to be talking to Nancy Atkinson, who um, she just wrote this book. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, don't remember the title of it right now, which is a really great pod. Don't have our notes. Uh, um, but it's about um, going to the moon. And right. uh, the scientists that um, and engineers and everybody who um, I believe it's like eight years to the moon. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, who worked on this process and uh, what their experience was going through it. And then we are going to be talking to guest of honor Alan Turner. Um, among other things, Alan has um, helped design a. Um, I believe it's a tabletop gaming, um, like a role-playing world and system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I actually uh, heard about it from friend of the show, uh, uh, Jacob Gulliver. He he went to the panel and he was telling me all about it. And um, it's uh, largely based on uh, Native American myth, I believe. Um, and it just sounds really cool. So I'm really looking forward to talking to him about that. Yeah, that's going to be great. He's a real interesting person and a sort of multi-hyphenate, talented uh, personality. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I guess uh, if you hear this and it's Sunday, uh, stop by our table. Uh, we'll have another update uh, from the con tomorrow. We'll be all set up recording, so we'll probably just do it right there. And uh, anything else before we take off? No, I think that's it. I think we've done it. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, I'll get to work on that uh, tango and more cash uh, right away. And that's it for tonight. We're signing off. I'm your host, Caliban. I'm your co-host, Mikan Hana. Keep the geek fires burning. me and you. Believe me, baby. I know it, baby. You know it, too. 